Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show, a wet nasty washout here in the northeast and a lot of you guys are uh tackling the same weather again not a lot of things uh could go perfect in life weather shouldn't be uh, a reason that you don't continue to live your life uh to the fullest with the utmost uh in happiness uh if you are brand new to the channel we invite you to come along right come along on this journey subscribe share like this channel uh again i try to give uh the most unbiased way to looking at the market we don't fall in love with individual tickers uh we fall in love with technical analysis and technical analysis uh when uh done properly will love you back so let's talk about it uh, a lot of things uh have changed since we last spoke uh, for all you guys who don't know uh this broadcast goes out to the general public monday tuesday wednesday uh thursday i'm off i need a kind of a brain uh, you know, reset for Friday session and then uh, once on the weekend. This is your weekend update. Uh, a lot of things have really changed since uh, Wednesday. If you guys remember the last video, we were, you know, we were, you know, teetering on the bottom of the range here uh, when Microsoft came out with numbers. And if you guys remember, we had the lowest close in this whole formation on the 20 day moving average. It looked like uh, it was, excuse me, wrong one right here. Um, it looked like the market was about to fall off a planet. Uh, the news on Microsoft got sold. So you turn around and say, well, naturally eBay is not going to, not eBay, but uh, uh, Meta is not going to save the market if Mark Microsoft couldn't. This is why you play the game. Uh, the same day you look like Tesla was going to fall off a cliff. A lot of technical damage, especially in uh, the semiconductor space. And you say to yourself, well, here we go. You know, earnings season was the catalyst. You know, we, we've had, we went through the banking mess uh, you know, we're going through earnings season. Surely Netflix, Tesla, uh, they missed the market, uh, sold off uh, Microsoft on good earnings. Here we go again, right? The market's going to implode, yada, yada, yada. Three days later, we are literally closed at the top of the range, finally uh, getting above uh, the four, uh, let's see here, the 404 highs of 321.63. We'll get to the pivots uh, in a second. But if if you look at the tape, right, if you look at the tape and look at the commentary, um, you know, you had good earnings this week uh, from Meta and Microsoft. It did really, really well. Uh, Google and Amazon, not so much. Matter of fact, uh, Amazon came out. Uh, the same basic news that Microsoft went up on, on cloud spending, um, Amazon came in and said, well, we're, we're seeing customers a little resilient uh, excuse me, a little um, res having resistance uh, for paying for cloud and so forth and so on. And Amazon that had a really aggressive initial spike. And if you guys remember, we were talking about it uh, throughout the week, but especially the day they came out with earnings, they were really pounding uh, the week, the weekly 110, 115, uh, 120 calls. So when the, when the, when they finally came out with earnings, Amazon absolutely exploded. It really did. It was trading the 20s. For a long, you know, for about an hour and a half, two hours, and then when the conference call started, and the CEO started talking about the the reluctant spending in the cloud space, the stock really started imploding. And what was up 10% at one point uh, went down 4% very, very quickly uh, on the conference call. And there was a whole discussion. This is something like you know we always talk about a lot of gray areas in the market. You know, buying the stock and selling the stock. Uh, you know, that, that's that's the most basic part about trading. Anybody could buy and sell a stock. You don't even have to know what you're doing. Uh, and you can buy and sell a stock. That's all it is, is clicking a mouse. But you know, for anybody who's going overnight on uh, on earn, especially on earnings, right? Number one, you already know it's a gamble. Nobody knows exactly how the stock is going to respond. You can have the greatest, uh, you know, you can have the absolute greatest quarter on the surface on paper, and then like the CEO of Amazon comes on. I thought, for example, I totally, totally forgot I was in Bezos, uh, but he came on and completely, you know, threw cold water on all the earnings. And here we and here we are. We had, had a complete. Uh, had a complete reversal. And it's something important for option players. We talk about this all the time. There's so many hours uh, from, you know, from the, the time that the earnings are released. Okay. So let's just say the earnings are released at four o'clock, right? A little after four o'clock. So you have between four o'clock 
to eight o'clock. That's four hours. That's including conference calls, all that other stuff. In that four hours, again, you're seeing so many different things happen. Other companies that are that are warning, uh, potentially warning. Other companies that are coming out with earnings. Maybe some political, uh, you know, political news that strikes out of nowhere. Maybe some uh, global headline that comes out of nowhere. Some Fed headline comes out of nowhere. And between that and the overnight session, right, you have so many more hours by the time that 930 area, you're looking at 15, you know, 15 hours or so, 16 hours or so that anything could happen to your stock. And the one thing I've always said, especially in the webinar over and over and over again, if you are going overnight on something that has an event, right, and the stock goes in your direction, if you have the ability, and this is why we always say it's, it's, it's super important to have a fully funded account. Uh, what it means is as much money as you possibly could have in that account. Because if you're going overnight, like a perfect example on Amazon, it spiked up ten, eleven dollars. Um, and if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have the ability to short stock against your uh, calls, right? If you didn't have the ability to short stocks against your calls, uh, you woke up the next day or even you know an hour later and saw you know that Amazon was a completely a huge reversal. Now you are out of luck. So you know if you are going into earnings or any event. And you do get appreciation or you know depreciation or depending on what side you're trading always consider you know you know if you are long a stock and it's up 10 always consider shorting some shorting some equity right shorting some underlying equity just to kind of start flattening out and paring out your gains because again as we saw in amazon is a perfect example you just never know there's no guarantees so as much as meta you know just exploded right just exploded on earnings right and that's great if you had calls but the second, you know, but the other equation is well, what happens if they pull an Amazon and your calls that would have been up, ex, you know, it, you know exponentially um, at the 9:30 open now are, are, you know, I don't know if these were worthless, but you know, they're they're much more, uh, they're much more, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a much more in a fault position that you wanted. So always consider if you have the, you know, the account balance, uh, always to consider, you know, sell short some stock against uh, your calls just to start pairing yourself out because again, in life. Uh, as in trading, there absolutely is uh, no guarantee. So let's talk about the tape. So we we did have uh, the the highest close in this whole formation. And keep this in mind: this is during six bank failures, right? The the, the most recent one uh, was FRC. They came out with earnings. Uh, they came out with earnings a couple of days ago. But the key uh, the key cock to the earnings report was that they they saw a forty percent drop. Uh, in um, deposits, right? That's a big deal. I mean, who the hell is going to start depositing money in a stock that they know uh, is potentially going to fail? And the next day, there was rumors of the FDIC uh, taking them over. They finally, uh, you know, they finally just basically threw in the towel. Uh, and now the FDIC is looking for uh, receivership, which basically means they're taking them over. Uh, and then you saw just this, this humongous move down uh, traded under two dollars at one point. There was chatter uh, after the close. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was chatter after the close uh, that J.P. Morgan could be bidding on their assets after uh, you know pennies on the dollar. So you know this you know this is something that's going to be a, a big fire sale, uh, and a company like J.P. Morgan is obviously uh, going to uh, take advantage. Uh, the other big story, right? I never thought I'd be saying this was the stock top, right? And here's another perfect example of. You know, new traders, and again, it's it's new traders. You know, I I don't know anybody. All, all my buddies are trading north of t twenty years. I don't know that one person that even looked at this thing. Uh, it, it's too crazy. It's it's gambling. You you could say what you win, uh, you, what you want, but new traders, um, you know, they're they're so fixated on instant, you know, instant gratification. They want the fast money, the aggressive money. They don't want it even now. They want it yesterday. And here's a perfect gambling tool. I don't know what happened to the stock. I don't care what happened to the stock. But if you, you know, but I did watch this thing on Friday. It was trading at a seven dollar spread. I Man, what are you guys doing? Honestly, guys, trading is supposed to be boring, lethargic, predictable. This is gambling. I don't care what you want to call this. This is gambling. This is the same thing of betting the money line on an NBA game. At least if you bet the money line in an NBA game, you know your money. You know, you already bet your bet your money. Your your exposure is gone. At least you can enjoy the game for three hours. This is. Straight up gambling, like I've said in, in times, uh, look, you're all adults, right? You're all adults. Um, you know, nobody's going to tell you what to do. I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to judge. But just understand that, you know, this is gambling. This is the purest form of gambling. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure somebody made money on this thing. I saw some horrific, horrific things on social media, but people blowing out their accounts. I mean, come on guys. It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Call it what it is. If you're trying to make money, call it gambling, right? If you are trading, you shouldn't have any, any reservations to look at this thing because again, you're not in control. I don't know what the news was. I don't care what the news was. The stock went apparently from six to two fifty back to $50 after hours. I mean, who the hell knows? But again, if you do want to be a professional trader and that's your aspirations, you have to put on the blinders and, you know, get rid of, you know, the, the, the get rich quick, sexy, exciting stocks. I mean, you could be trading Amazon, Apple, Tesla. They're just so orderly. They're so orderly and their contingent move bases are, are in institutional money flow in the options market versus versus retail piling in trying to make you know trying to make a fortune and hit the powerball again if, if you ever if you were trading for a long time you realize it's all about the grind it's all about the day-to-day -day, one trade at a time one you know one day at a time uh every day is completely different you have different situations you have different sentiment uh def different ways of looking uh, at the stock market at any given time something like this is just it's just it, it's a shame if you made money on this thing consider yourself lucky. Uh, if you took the other side of the equation and you shorted this thing, you know, look, you're going to bounce back, but learn from it. You know, don't make it a second, you know, a second, third, fourth case scenario that you're doing this over and over again. And you're looking for uh, a, another result. There's gambling, there's trading, you know, obviously this is not trading. This is just something that, you know, you're trying to, to, to strike lightning in a bottle and if you do, it's a hell of a story to tell somebody. Uh, other than that, uh, we're deep into uh, earning seasons. Uh, we are closed. You know, we have closed at the top of the range. Uh, you know, you know, even Tesla finally woke up a little bit. You know, I I'll tell you one thing. Tesla got saved. It really got saved. You see how I kept on, if, if you guys remember on Wednesday's, uh, on Wednesday's video, um, this thing was sitting right on the linear regression line. And it opened up it opened up green one red went down like two bucks and then had a quite a nice reversal and now you know the stock is actually tradable for monday you probably get one more you know one or two more days of it but that's the whole point like i trade tesla in both ways you know to the downside uh to the upside you guys don't fall in love with the stock okay fall in love with the range and if that range confirms that's the best way to attack a trade uh you know again i see so many people so emotionally engulfed in tesla no this is a buying opportunity you're crazy it's a small bounce it's gonna go lower yeah it might it might and that's it might on both sides but when you have a range right you want to take advantage of the range so for example friday and we'll go over the pivots in a second we knew that if it reclaimed the five-day moving average it was going to start bouncing back is it possible it gets to the 168 170 on on monday yeah there's a shot right there's a shot but i also uh, I also am very, very, you know, I'm also very open to the idea that, hey, it turns right back around, it loses back the five-day moving average, and now you have the bottom of the channel that it defended last week uh, for a potential uh, for a potential retest. So, uh, so you always want to be uh, very, very conscious of your environment. You always want to be uh, very conscious of the ranges of the stocks, trade both sides of the market, uh, be responsible, be fiscally responsible. Again, trading is all about the grind, base hits, base hits, base hits. You know, manufacture runs, get hit by a pitch, take a walk, maybe get on an error. Luck sometimes plays a part of it. And sometimes you will hit a home run, right? But the point is when you're trading a stock, when I say trading, when you're buying, you know, playing a stock like like top, right? Uh, you, you're going for the home run every single time. It doesn't exist. It's like, it's like an NFL quarterback, the first play of the game from its own 20, throwing a Hail Mary. Maybe he'll complete it one out of 100 times. Maybe he won't. But the point is he'll definitely put himself in a situation as being uh, as being uh, the victim instead of uh, being the aggressive. So just be kind of conscious. Uh, it's super important, uh, you know, trading, you know, it's super important of how you proceed in this business of what you trade uh, and, you know, and how you trade. But it's very, very important uh, to understand the risk before uh, you put your hard uh, earn money. So going into this week, let's look at the indexes uh, very, very quickly. You can get keys at the top of the range here in the middle of uh, earnings season. Uh, you have, let's see here, you have a lot of, obviously a lot of earnings uh, coming again this week. Uh, Monday, uh, Monday, you got SoFi, nothing big, MGM Grand, uh, MicroStrategies all tied up into Bitcoin, uh, on Semiconductor, nothing really, you know, nothing really crazy. Tuesday, it starts up again. Uh, it starts up again. You got AMD, you got Ford, Starbucks, Uber, Pfizer, uh, Sarepta. 
Match.com. And let's see here. Wednesday, you got Qualcomm, Etsy, uh, Sun Power, nothing really crazy. Thursday is going to be the big one. Uh, you have uh, Coin, Shop, Square, and obviously Apple is going to be uh, the setter of the tone uh, for Friday's session. So as of right now, uh, buyers are being rewarded for dips, even when there's technical damage, as we've seen here, as we've seen here. Uh, and, and again, the, you know, the, the old joke is, hey, if you keep on buying the dip, eventually you'll be right. And then this market uh, is proving uh, is proving uh, that you are completely correct. And the most important part is it's continuously uh, negating bad news. Again, six bank failures in the last you know month. I mean, it really does show you uh, how aggressive the market is. All right, guys. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the pivots uh, from Friday again. Uh, Wednesday, I was super uh, bearish. Came in short. Tesla went green to red. You know, went down another couple of points and then it reversed. And then it started reclaiming back the five-day moving average, and that's uh, that 161 level. So 161. Let me just show you the chart where this 161 came from 161 if you if you notice the last two highs right the last two highs into the five day moving average was 160 67 and the next day's high is 160 48 so we knew if it could got to get above 161 it could reclaim the five day moving average which is the shortest term sentiment 161 closed you know pretty much you know pretty much at the highs of the day near uh 165 i still think if it could, if it could get us get above this two channels here i think there's a shot at 68 70 for another near-term uh, scalp. Uh, NVIDIA exploded towards the end of the day. 275 needs to build. Uh, here is uh, NVIDIA, right? Another uh, example of a stock uh, reclaiming and building above the five-day, right? This whole area here was the five-day. It reclaimed, took out the 75, uh, closed at the high of the day, 77 and a half. It looks like, you know, if it doesn't die out this week, it looks like there's a shot here uh, into the 280s ahead of its numbers uh, in a couple of weeks uh let's see let's see let's see let's see uh apple uh nice move on apple 168.60 uh needs to build here is apple again all these stocks just breaking out again mirror image of the queues took out the 68 area went to 70 again if it starts reclaiming 70 uh it should go higher against uh ahead of its earnings uh so that was that uh ttd not a big move went from 64.80 to like 65.60s uh before it reversed uh, Microsoft has been awesome. We caught this great, great move uh, from that 299.57, 300 area. Uh, it just exploded, took runners overnight. And I said, listen, basically for all those who are long uh, a runner, uh, 305.20, yes, these highs, but stalls out there, sell your runners. It confirmed that, you know, it confirmed very, very aggressively, put in a new base there and exploded. I said potential 308, 309 if the market continues. And Microsoft was definitely, definitely the move uh, of the week. Look at the high, the high here. It traded right to the 309 level. Big, big move. Congratulations to all you guys uh, who took Amazon. I thought there was a shot. Uh, Amazon, excuse me. Congratulations to all you guys who took Microsoft. There was a shot that, that I thought that Amazon could shake off uh, the earnings, uh, the earnings uh, turnaround. It did not do so. It stayed red uh, the whole day. Uh, Meta, there was a couple of areas of Meta. There was a bounce spot on Meta. It didn't take out the natural pivot. Guys, watch this uh, 242 level for Meta this week, uh, stock has been acting really, really well. Great, it had a great rest on uh, the day after earnings. Uh, OSCR went up about a dime, nothing there. Uh, and again, here's the queues: uh, two, three twenty-one sixty-three. The daily range needs to build, and the queues closed at the highs of the day, a dollar higher above its range. Again, market looks pretty good going to this week. Again, here because Meta read the green, it did a couple of times. Uh, there as well. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. If you look at the spies, uh, you look at the spies, they're about to break out as well. Uh, you know, watch this, you know, watch this for this week. Watch this 418.31 level. Uh, the IWM, again, very, very completely different picture than everything else. Still underwater. Again, the money is out of speculation, which, which obviously you wouldn't think so with all these uh, crazy Chinese stocks flying, but the kind of that's what it is. And then NASDAQ keeps on going. Can this uh, gravy train keep on going? Keep fighting off the bad news, again, to be determined. So all you guys have a wonderful, uh, wonderful weekend. For all you guys who are uh, planning to join us in the live webinar this week, please uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, watch, start watching the two workshops. And for all you guys who have not watched the workshop, it's completely free. Uh, there's two versions of it. It's about 8, 10 hours long. I, I completely uh, break down the PS60 theory. And if you've been wondering 
uh, or thinking about uh, pivots, are they right for you? We have a 30 day, uh, we have a 30 day offer. Try it out for 30 days. Uh, the only thing you have to lose is looking at, you know, is, is kind of disconnecting yourself from this whole social media world and looking at the market completely different way. Guys, have a great, great weekend. God bless, and I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.